Uh, we've gone through the redundancies. We now need to think about the redundancies and um, how that's impacted the organisation. And um, what about those employees that are still within the organisation? So redundancies is difficult not only for those being let go, but for the, the employees left behind. And uh, empathy and listening are key. Redundancies are tough on those being made redundant, tough on business leaders, um, making the decisions, tough on managers, having the conversations, and tough on those who remain employed. No one wants it to happen. No one wanted COVID-19 to happen. In this process, it is incumbent on employers to demonstrate care and compassion as the organisation goes through a very painful process. Communication are a central tool in this process and at all times employees have to stay focused on two audiences, those who are leaving and those who are staying. Those who keep their, job, their jobs will judge the company and its leaders on how well it treats those who are leaving. All communication should be open and as transparent as possible about the situation. They should show empathy and reflect the mood of the staff. Employers should manage the redundancies to the best of their ability and resources. It is not solely about money, though employers should aim to be generous, but also about the support um, provided. Consider what additional upskilling can be made available to improve people's job opportunities. How can you improve confidence in job search? Take time to talk to other employers in the sector and locally, locally to see if they could employ some individuals and find a way to mark the departure of the employees. Um, openness and transparency in communication also help to build trust among those who are staying. They know an employer cannot guarantee job security. In, in many cases, they are also likely to be um, hurting from pay cuts. Attention now has to shift to strong, positive communications that focus on getting employees behind the business performance that will help to secure the future of the company. Um, I think this is very, very critical because, you know, again, the employers that stay are thinking, oh my God, this could happen to me. So they're probably job hunting and looking out there to see is there a more secure role in the in the. Um, in their, their area of expertise. So it is really critical to try and hold on to the talented um, staff that you've got. So there are five steps to take to um, rebuild engagement. First, focus on purpose. Help the employees to reconnect with the aim and purpose of the business, both financial and social. Talk about this as it is the common thread that will help to you untie and engage um, employees and provide meaning to the work of those who remain. So it'll just unite the, the, the workforce together. Secondly, build collaboration around clear short-term goals. Have a dialogue about what the business must achieve in the next six to 12 months for its survival and growth. Articulate one or two big company-wide goals. Make them very visible and continually report on the progress. This helps individuals to have something to focus on and to see the impact of their uh, combined effort. Third, engage staff in the restructuring process. Once employees have been let go, um, ways of working and processes have to be reconfigured. Involve employees in this, giving ownership as much as possible and let staff reimagine um, how processes can be simplified. In such a restructure, skill gaps will emerge as expertise will have been lost in the business. It is important to invest in developing the remaining employees to fill the emerging skill gaps, improve their future employability, as well as creating um, future leaders. Development should become a core activity and it will mean seeking out creative solutions where there are financial constraints. Fourth, ensure managers are having conversations with their teams about what has happened. It is important to recognise that people are likely to 
to be upset when picking up or changing the work of former colleagues. Show compassion and acknowledge the feelings. Don't let them be pushed under the table to fester and provide some social time for their release. And finally, build a strong feedback loop so employees have a say in what is happening, how they are, get, how they are getting on and the areas of improvement. Now is the time to learn and to be seen to learn from previous mistakes. Employee survey tools and team meetings are both avenues to let individuals express their views. Key to successful engagement will be recognising the contribution of the employees who stayed. Along with recognising everyone's co um, combined effort to achieve company wins and, and progress against goals. Bring in a way to recognise individuals who are excelling. This could be as simple as an email from the CEO each week to say, well done. In, on the 1st of December, we're hoping that the business will reopen again and we will be able to return to the workplace. But a lot of employees have been now out of the workplace for quite some time, potentially since last March. So when bringing any employee back to the workplace, there's a few areas that really need to be considered. So how do um, how you manage the return of the workplace will depend on the type of closure arrangement that have been operating. The three most prevalent, prevalent types were business not trading at all, so staff were on short term layoff business trading on a limited basis, some staff on short term layoff, some working from home or in company presence, uh, premises or where only essential workers are currently at work. And then business trading fully, but all staff working from home. Whichever of these is the closest to your individual business, there are some common issues you need to, ad you need to address. There will be a requirement for some form of social distancing for some time to come. Lockdown restraints will likely be lifted incrementally and all staff who can work from home will be expected to carry on doing so. Where certain groups of employees or businesses are part of a sectoral return to the workplace, employers will need to consider detailed risk management um, approaches to safeguard the health and minimise the risk of infection. It is therefore essential that employers continue to base any plans for returning to the workplace on up-to-date government and public health guidelines in relation to COVID-19. Given the, that the priority for every business should be managing a safe return to the workplace for staff, it's crucial that you work in close collaboration with your health and safety and occupational health uh, teams wherever possible. Communicate the practical measures you are taking to staff on a regular basis to help reassure them that their health, well-being and safety is your top priority. Make sure employees are clear about what procedure they should follow and if they begin to feel unwell both in the workplace and at home. Um, so the COVID restrictions will, will continue to apply. You will need to review your workplace and consider, can staff maintain a two metre physical distance between each other? How will you manage meetings, interviews and other interactions? What about communal areas such as canteens or kitchen areas? How can you implement resourcing strategies to support a physical distance, such as cohorting, for example, keeping teams or workers together in small groups if possible. Having different teams work alternative days or staggering working hours so that not all staff are in at the same time. We need um, separate one-way paths to, for entrances and, and way outs. Um, how, will you, how will compliance with this be monitored? Induction and communication will be central in ensuring employees are both familiar and comp compliant with all of the initiatives that have been put in place. All of the key protection and hygiene 
measures will continue to apply to minimise the spread of infections, such as remaining, reminding staff about regular and effective hand washing and providing hand sanitizer. If your premises have been closed for um, a period of time, you should carry out a deep clean before you reopen. You should therefore review your cleaning arrangements, for example, ensuring all phones, keyboards, etc. are wiped daily and anti with an antiviral cleaner. Um, you can refer to the government um, guidelines for more information on this. And again, depending on your working environment, you may need to consider providing additional PPE, including gloves, masks, or any, or any, any antiviral hand gel. If you want people to wear gloves, masks, then you will also need to think about training briefing staff on their correct usage, since both can be ineffective if used inappropriately. Staff who travel or visit other company premises may also need additional equipment or briefing. Remote meeting facilities and video conferencing should be encouraged wherever possible to minimise the need for staff to travel or to use public transport. Um, you can refer to our we have tips there on how to work remotely. Um, the risks to people's health from this pandemic are psychological as well as physical. These include anxiety about the on, their ongoing health, crisis and, and fear of infection, as well as social isolation due to the lockdown. Many will have experienced challenging domestic situations such as juggling childcare or caring for the vulnerable relative, as well as financial worries if a partner has lost their income. Some may have experienced illnesses or bereavement. Even if staff have carried on working and participating in video meetings, they will still need to adjust to working in a shared environment with colleagues. Some may make some may take more time than others to readjust and it's likely that most people need a period of readjustment. Some members of staff also may have concern about travelling to work on public transport or it may not be as readily available. Many may find that they are still coming to terms with the significant change um, which society has seen and the familiar workplace routines can feel very different. If your business has an employee assistance programme or access to occupational health advisors, make staff aware of these services because um, there's a lot of support and, and help when you have those services. Um, it will be vital um, to have a reorientation or a reinduction process for returning staff. Encourage and support every manager to have one-on-one -on -one return meetings with each employee whether um, where a key focus is on health, safety and well-being. Managers need to have a sensitive and open discussion with every individual and discuss any adjustments and or ongoing support they may need to facilitate any adjustments and or in the workplace. This is especially important for those who have been on short-term layoff and the induction should cover topic, topics such as changes in company services or procedures, how specific customer queries or issues are being addressed, or changes in supply arrangements as well as any changes in their work duties or tasks. It could be that some staff require a phased return to their full hours or full role, or want to discuss a new working arrangement, especially if their domestic situation has changed because of the pandemic. It'll be important to, for every employer to ensure that the organisational culture is inclusive and that every employee feels that they are returning to a supportive and caring environment. The pandemic has had an unequal impact across the workforce in many ways, as different groups of employees and individuals will have been affected in diverse ways according to their job role and individual circumstances. The uneven nature of people's work and personal experience and the challenging nature of the lockdown and ongoing situation means there could be potential for some negative feelings creeping into the employment relations climate. Therefore, it is important that the organisation fosters an inclusive working environment 
and managers are sensitive to any underlying tensions and confident um, about nipping potential conflict in the bud. You may wish um, to refer back to a video we did uh, a while back on managing conflict, conflict in, the, in the workplace. So think about what criteria you will use to recall staff. Will it be uh, simple? Um, will it be simple, simply business needs? How will you consider individual personal circumstances? Uh, the management of certain age groups, such as those over 60 or those with health issues or, or at risk dependence, will need care, careful consideration. And ideally, reasonable accommodation should be agreed. Recalling certain cohorts while others remain out of work will need clear business criteria to minimise the risk of employees' relation issues. Remember not to use discriminatory criteria. Be fair and inclusive and keep in mind your organisational values and diversity and inclusive aims.